Hello and welcome to the video. This is about iNav 3.0, specifically around auto-tune. Uh, the way that auto-tune works on the models now, uh, fixed wing models, has changed quite a bit. Uh, the actual process is more or less the same, but I've had quite a few questions about it, so if you have asked me about it, this video is for you. Now, there's full details, as usual, uh, more in the release notes at the moment for iNav 3.0 rather than in the documentation. As I'm recording this, the documentation is still playing catch up with iNav 3.0. But if we just jump on the computer and we look at what it says for the improved auto tune stuff in the release notes, it kind of tells us everything we need to know. So in here, it, you can see that it uh, has been changed. There is a setting called FW Auto Tune Rate Adjustment, and we'll have a look at that in a second. But there are three settings. Auto is the default, which is the one that I'm using here. That will both auto tune the plane as normal, uh, but it will also tune the rates as well for how quickly the plane can move. And that's was one of the challenges with the old auto tune is that you had to kind of uh, set the rates up yourself and guess how quickly the model would move. Uh, with the new system, if you set it something like auto, then as well as tuning all of that, it's also going to be figuring out how fast the model can move. If we go back to the notes, there's also two of the settings. There is one called max, where the rates will be adjusted, but never above the starting values. Uh, that's very handy if you have a very agile plane and you don't want it getting too carried away and making it very tricky to fly. The last setting is fixed, where rates will not be adjusted. It kind of behaves like the old auto tune, really, where it's just changing the PI and FF stuff. Uh, from what the playing I've been doing here, it doesn't seem to touch the D. So in terms of the process and how you set it up, it isn't too tricky. Only a couple of things you need to do. Obviously, assign the auto tune mode to a switch, and also have one of your flying modes as acro, and that. Acro is when you don't have any flying mode selected. So the way I've set it up here, in the low position, it is for Horizon, which is what the plane comes out of once it has done the auto launch. Uh, that's kind of a safe mode, so it'll continue flying straight and level. Um, if I'm struggling, maybe my glasses you know, have slipped off my face or something. Uh, then in the middle position, I have Manual, which I fly a lot. And I'll kind of compare the roll rates when we've got the tune done in the video in a second to manual, which is basically where the flight controller is doing nothing apart from the mixing, really, and a bit of expo. And then the last one is set for acro. So what we'll do in a moment, uh, I'll show you the entire footage and I'll kind of talk you through it. I am going to auto launch this. Um, see my video on auto launch for iNav. Exactly the same setup. I tend to have with this particular model the prop speed really high. Uh, so that this with this 2000 kV motor, 5x5 five five prop, it gets into the air no problem at all. So let me jump onto the footage and talk you through it and show you how it all works. Oh, tell you what, let's have a quick look before we do that at what the default PIFF gains were before we go to the field. So here are the defaults. So the proportional for roll, pitch, and yaw are 5, 10, and 6, respectively. Uh, and you can see all the pieces on there. I imagine the feed forward is going to go up quite a bit. Uh, if we look at the rates, because again, we need to look at rates because rates are also going to be changed. We can see the roll rate is currently set for 180 degrees per second. The pitch rate is 90 degrees per second. This model is quite quick on the roll axis, uh, not so quick on the pitch axis. Uh, so let's go in and actually fly and see where we end up. So here we are at the field. I'm going to do a standard auto launch, which I always do. So I'm going to raise the throttle. I'm going to give it a throw and away it goes. So it goes up in angle mode. I move the sticks and it's going to drop straight into horizon, which is my normal default mode. And it's also going to then uh, trim itself because I haven't got any input on the sticks to fly straight and level. I'll put it into... Uh, manual mode and we'll just do a little bit of flying make sure she's okay because I've, I've got that as a fallback we're into acro mode now ready to do the auto tune I'm gonna flick auto tune on I'm gonna start very aggressive roll commands left right left right and initially it feels incredibly mushy you're gonna need a lot of space on this you're going to need a lot of height as well uh, and, and as I do it it's starting to get a little bit better already. That didn't take long. And as you continue to do it, it will start to feel much, much more responsive. It doesn't take too long. 
However, the trick is not to stop once it feels good to continue on a little bit more just to make sure that those settings are fine tuned and that those settings have been saved. Now I'm happy with the roll. I'm going to do some aggressive pitch maneuvers. Again, still in auto tune. Just keep an eye on that height and make sure that you have a nice, clear, calm day for this. You'll get the best results. Keep popping the nose up and down. Do a little bit more roll. Yeah, this is starting to feel really good. This feels very similar now to the kind of reaction that I get out of a manual mode. So a little bit more bouncing around, a little bit more pitch. Yeah, that feels about right, actually. Great, okay. So with that all set, let's just finish off and then I'll come out of auto-tune. Now, occasionally this happens. Uh, it does seem to, when I'm doing the pitch, to go into a roll, just gets a little bit carried away. Um, definitely be ready for that. Make sure you've got a little bit of height. You need to be at least two mistakes high when you're doing this. Uh, haven't done it on all my models, so now I'm out of auto-tune. We'll have a quick go of what the roll rate is on acro. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty close to what it's like in manual. So in manual, that's what it looks like. Come back so I'm not getting too far away. Uh, so in manual and acro, the roll rates in particular are very, very close. That feels fantastic. So what I'll do is I will, uh, keeping it out of auto-tune, we don't want to land in auto-tune really. I think auto-tune for this little setup has done its job. Let me bring it into land. Now when I bring it into land, you can hold your sticks to the bottom position like I'm showing here and that will save it but also I like to have a quick look at them in the on-screen display while I'm recording my DVR in case something does happen and they're not saved but now I'm happy I've also got those things in the DVR let's go back onto the computer plug it back into iNav and have a look at where the PIFF values ended up so here they are after the flight. You can see the numbers have changed quite dramatically. The roll pitch and yaw have all changed. The feed forward in particular has changed quite a bit. Integral has moved around too. But also, not only has the PIFF stuff been tuned as part of the process, the rates have been changed as well. So the roll rate has been increased to 230 degrees per second and my pitch rate is much slower and this tends to be how it is on most planes is about 70 degrees per second. It has set those up for me. So there you have it. That is how you set up uh, auto-tune on your model. It isn't really difficult. It's very similar to the other way around. Make sure you have acro set as one of your flight modes while you're flying in acro. Enable auto-tune. Do lots of violent maneuvers. Uh, in one axis, first of all, I tend to go for roll and it'll initially be very sluggish and then it'll get better and better and better and better. And then once you're happy with that, do some nasty pitch oscillations. And again, it'll start sluggish, but it'll get better and better and better. And when it feels really good, carry on for a little bit longer to make sure that it saves those settings onto the flight controller. Remember, the settings in the flight controller are only in memory. They're not saved anywhere. Once you're happy it's flying good, come out of auto-tune, land the model. You don't want to land it with auto-tune turned on. And then once it's on the ground, go into the menu and save the settings and then I would just keep a note of them onto your computer for future setups. So hopefully that helps those of you that are a little bit worried about this. It just works really well. iNav 3.0 is a massive improvement over iNav 2.6, 2.61. So if you're on 2.6, 2.61, it's flying okay. Uh, you know, there is a school of thought that says if it works, don't bugger about with it. But actually, I am going to be upgrading the majority of my fleet now to 3.0. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you're trying to learn about a subject then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.